are you tired of getting outplayed? Constantly getting demolished? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly level up your Smash Ultimate skills. Whether you're looking for tier lists, character guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Esam, Zero, and MK Leo support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to start improving right now. Remember back when Ultimate was announced and people thought it was gonna basically be a Smash 4 port to the Switch? Haha, <laughs> what a take, Mark. What a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. Well, the changes to dashing alone sure proved that wrong. Then the rest of the changes to Ultimate buried that take so far underground, most people forgot it ever existed. Ultimate is definitely its own beast and has introduced tons of controversial changes. And there are a few changes quite as large and controversial as the changes made to Shield. In Smash 4, shielding was so good that running up to an opponent and shielding wasn't just a legitimate form of neutral, it was one of the most legitimate forms of neutral. It didn't help that Smash 4 had lots of great out of shield options too. So when Ultimate came out and changed shield, it was only natural that a lot of people felt shielding sucked. But we're here to tell you that shields are busted in Ultimate. Well, sort of. What we're really gonna do is tell you how shields have changed in Ultimate, and we're gonna do it in two videos. In this first video, we're gonna explain some changes to shielding and how they actually improve shielding and defensive play in Ultimate. In the second video to come later, we're gonna explain how the changes hurt shielding and defensive play. From here, we'll let you decide what you will about shields and how they change the game. Let's start off by talking about some mechanics and some history. Smash has always had shields because like most fighting games, it needed some form of block. Unlike a lot of fighting games, Smash's block has a health mechanic. The shield breaks if it takes too much damage. Since so much of Smash's nuance was gonna come from directionality, you needed a block that covered everything. Since you had a block that covered everything, having HP made it more balanced. This is all very simple. The nuance comes with the numbers. In each iteration of Smash, shields come with stats, HP, depletion per second, regeneration per second, shield stun, shield drop frames, jump squat frames, and more. These bits of nuances come to shape what a Smash game looks like, and not necessarily the nuances you'd expect either. For example, Melee has the highest shield HP in the Smash series at 60 HP. That's 10 more HP or 20% more health than in Smash 4. So why aren't Melee players running up and shielding? It's because of shield drop frames. To do a lot of moves after your shield, you have to stop holding the shield button or shield drop. In each game, shield dropping comes with some frames of lag. In Smash 4, it's 7 frames of lag. In Melee, it's 15. So dropping shield shield and retaliating in Smash 4 has a lot less lag than in Melee. That means it's safer to shield in Smash 4 in general. So how good a shield is in a game will depend on how good your different out of shield options are. That's a jump, an up special, an up smash, a roll, a spot dodge, a shield grab, or just dropping shield. In each Smash iteration, the role of the shield changes as it gets its strengths and weaknesses tweaked. That's also why we have to be careful when thinking about shields in broad, objective strokes. Ultimate has made some of the most drastic changes to shield since Melee. Notably, dropping shield takes 11 frames, the second highest in all Smash games after Melee. Rolling is also a lot weaker as a shield grab. All those things have made shielding worse in some key ways in Ultimate. And we'll explain all that in the next video, tackling the ways in which shielding got worse in Ultimate. But for now, let's focus on how shields actually got stronger, starting with jumping out of shield. That's right, jumping out of shield is the best option again. And Melee HD's back on the menu! But seriously, one of the big changes Ultimate made was to jump squats. Jump squats are the early parts of the jump animation before a character leaves the ground. Ultimate gave every character a universal 3 frame jump squat. That means we're in Smash 4 some characters could be slower to jump out of shield, it now holds equal in Ultimate. Probably one of many reasons why Ultimate is looking like the most bounced Smash iteration ever. Anyways, the 3 frame jump squat means everyone gets a quick jump out of shield. Jumping becomes even better when you consider Ultimate's directional air dodging and faster aerials. Now you can air dodge away after after jumping out of shield or throw out an aerial. Theoretically, you could even wave dash, but that's not what it used to be and we don't recommend it. Sorry, uh, Melee HD's uh, is not actually, it's not back on the menu. It never was. Uh, forget what I said. In Ultimate, aerials, particularly neutral airs, are great out of shield options. Neutral airs tend to work the best because they're often the fastest options and the one most likely to cover both sides of a character. The best out of shield options are fast, so they can whiff punish even low lag moves, and widely reaching so they can catch an opponent if they cross you 
up and get behind you. If your character's fastest aerial only points in one direction, then you should try and find the next quickest aerial that will cover their other side. Sometimes the best out of shield option isn't an aerial at all. In ultimate, up specials and up smashers are pretty great too, though it's hard to say if they're really better than they were in Smash 4. Still, ultimate came along and made a lot of special and normal moves faster, and that applies to up specials and up smashes. Now, there are some notoriously good up specials to use out of shield. Here's a quick list for you. Mr. Game & Watch, all right, Lucina & Marth, Paul Tana, Krom, Samus, uh, Bowser, Dr. Mario, Zero Suit Samus, Cloud. Uh, okay, uh, man, I thought this was gonna be a quick list. All right, all of these up specials activate quickly, can be B reversed to cover either side and get you out of a disadvantage. Some up specials like Krom's do surprising amounts of damage. Others like Zero Suits double as a kill move and a rare few like Game & Watch and Bayonetta use theirs to start combos. Characters with good up smashes have an out of shield option that can kill, start combos or get stage control. Some examples are Mario, Olimar, Yoshi, Pikachu, Charizard, Rob, and oh man, I'm about to do the long list thing again, aren't I? Anyways, up smashes are really good in Ultimate 2, and they make shielding a lot stronger. There are two big things to note from the rise of up specials, up smashes, and aerials out of shields. The first is that these are all aggressive turn the tide options. In Ultimate, it can be hard just to retreat from shield pressure, though it is possible. Rolls aren't that bad in this game. Attacking a shield can also become a bit of a mental game. You have to know what options you have against theirs. You also have to think of ways to get them to use their out of shield option in a way that you could shield, dodge, or snuff out during the startup animation. The second thing is that these are all character specific options. How good a shield depends heavily on the character you're playing. On one hand, Game & Watch and Yoshi have fearsome shields decorated with the stock counters of their opponents. On the other, Greninja actually doesn't have a shield at all. All right, maybe I'm just kidding. Okay, yep, all right, let's just get that out of the way. But when your quickest out of shield option is a grab or a jab, oof. It's rough, buddy. The character-driven nature of shielding is one reason why the shield is simultaneously worse and better in Ultimate, and why different sets of people will both complain about shields being too good and not good enough. It really does depend on who you play and who you're playing. Before we go, we've got to add one more last zesty ingredient to the shield discussion. Grabs. Grabs beat blocks. I mean, that's just fighting game 101, folks. How good shields are depends a lot on how good grabs are. Ultimate is a curious case where grabs took a nerf across the board. They're still a vital part of the game, and some characters like Paul Tana or Bowser will use them a lot, but other characters like the Fire Emblem Sorties get a little and risk a lot with grabs. So while shields took a hit with shield grab nerfs, it's also a bit tougher to run up and grab people out of shield. And there's one more factor to consider, spot dodge. Spot dodge beats grab. If an opponent wants to grab, spot dodge lets you dodge but keeps you in place to counter attack. You can also just throw a move in the path of some grabs. But spot dodge will also beat most attacks, guarding you from a grab or a hit. In ultimate, spot dodges are actually really good. First, spot dodges have considered considerably less lag and more invulnerability frames than a roll. Spot dodges have roughly just 11 frames of vulnerability, 2 at the start and 9 on the end. Frame data wise, that makes them the best pure defensive option. And that's before spot dodge canceling. On top of all that, in ultimate, you can buffer a grounded attack immediately after spot dodging and cancel five frames of lag. This drops spot dodges down from 11 to six frames of vulnerability. Again, that might not seem like much, but six and 11 is the difference between a light power and medium power attack. An opponent could think they read your spot dodge, try a tilt, then get interrupted by your jab. Or you could read a dash grab, spot dodge it, then use the five frames you get from canceling to land a smash attack they could have shielded otherwise. Spot dodge canceling lends a lot of strength to ultimate shield. It makes grabs even riskier and punishes opponents for misspacing or being careless about shield pressure. Plus, it can be really useful for characters with quick smash attacks, like Olimar. If you're really into smash, you've probably heard some opinions about shielding either way. This video is meant to convince you of the strength shielding has in ultimate. This video is not the whole story though. The strength of shielding isn't as linear a metric as we often think. The utility of shield depends on the wider meta and context of the game. Because of that, blocking and shielding can get both weaker and stronger. If you watch this video, first, thank you very much. I mean, we all put our blood, sweat, and tears into what we make around here. But please stick around for the next one where we'll talk about the weaknesses of shielding and ultimate. That's right. We'll cover the huge amount of safe moves, the bad shield grab, the stale rolls. I mean, all of it. We'll even cover parrying. <laughs> Bet you thought we forgot about that, didn't we? No, we're just saving it for the next time. So don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.